man, because I think we need to talk about long-term care. Um, ultimately, this is how they began their relationship together. Um, it's something that can only be described as a higher power of the Holy Spirit of putting the two of them together because they needed to be together. Over the next 33 years, Ken served as a father to me, my two sisters, um, and his two, and his two ch children. Very early on in our relationship with my mom, Ken made the decision that the church was an important part of his life. It was an important part and he wanted to become a Catholic. He eventually was baptized um, and became Catholic. Um, later in his life, the church for my mom and for Papa became for Ken.
decided to send that card to my mother, for we are all so much more enriched that you came into our life. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And at this time, I'd like to ask the grandchildren and Brandon to join Joe and Father. Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Ken died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. May Christ, who claimed Ken in baptism, now enfold him in his love and bring him to eternal life. cross we have brought here today was carried by the Lord Jesus in the hour of his suffering. We place it now on this coffin as a sign of our hope for Ken. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
want to welcome you all to Spirit of Christ, friends and family of kin as we gather together today to offer our prayers for him, for his eternal soul, and to pray for ourselves that the gift of hope may always dwell in our hearts. Let us begin our celebration this morning with the opening prayer. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant, Ken, whom has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if to others indeed they seem punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As, God in the, as gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and roll over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who, not, he who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus, who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to welcome everyone today and thank you for coming on behalf of the family, especially. You know, um, I was thinking this morning, it's, this is a funeral I didn't want to have to do. <laughs> you know, I hate to see kin pass from us, from us at the parish and for you with your family. But a funeral is a, is a, is a really privileged time. It's a very privileged time for priests we're able to really honor people, to honor their faith, honor them before God. And we pray for them, and that's the, the custom, the tradition of our church from the very beginning is we prayed for the deceased. We know and we trust in our own faith that they're in the hands of God. We trust that that is the case. We see that for Ken today. I was thinking, as I mentioned this morning, I was thinking, you know, the things we're measured by, or at least in our own lives, are things like faith, hope, and charity. Those virtues are held up in our scriptures from Jesus' own teaching, reiterated by the Apostle Paul, as the kind of the measure of our relationship with God in faith, hope, and charity. Charity expresses itself in our actions, in our actions toward others, our our works of mercy, our works of compassion, our works that reach out to others. Charity is always, you know, thinking of another before ourselves. That's true charity. It's more than just love. It goes even further. It's been called the, the, the most important of the virtues. Um, faith, of course, is, is seen in, in our own personal relationship with God. And I think that's something that maybe we can't measure because it is so personal. But we all have that personal relationship with God, expresses itself in our prayer, in our devotion. And then there's the virtue of hope. And hope is, comes to the fore, I think, at the time of a death, and the time of the celebration of a funeral. Because it's all contained, our whole faith, our whole understanding is contained in our understanding of Christ, and our understanding of his mission. It's spoken of in this gospel today that was just read by Deacon A.J. When Jesus speaks of his own mission, he said, I was sent from heaven. You know, God sent his son to us for our redemption and our salvation. Jesus was to gather us all and then in his resurrection offer us to God. And he speaks about this is the will of the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. This is the faith of our church, but it's also the faith that we know to be true. It's written in our hearts. It's how God speaks to us. And the will of the one who sent me, as Jesus says, is that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but raise it up on the last day. So today, as we pray for Ken, we are praying for him as part of that mission of Christ, to raise him up, and well, to gather him up and to raise him up on the last day uh, for the Father. This is, uh, of course, a source of great hope to us. And, and at time of, of death, we know that many emotions take control, you know, loss, grief, very real emotions that should never be denied because they're very important and they express our own, our own um, love for each other in that loss and that grief. But it also turns itself to hope. 
And hope is what we rely on at this time. Now, the, the first two readings um, speak to the, in a way, to the griever. Because in the Book of Wisdom, it speaks about, you know, the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. Again, a source of hope. No torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead. And we don't want to be counted among that number. We don't want to be considered foolish. That we just believe that death is an end. An end. No, that's not the case at all. Death is really a transition. It's a, it's a new life in God. And then in the, the, the second reading taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, he, he speaks of that, um, that beautiful passage, which we go back to often, you know, who will separate us from the love of God? No one. No one, it's not possible. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? And all of the calamities of life that we can throw at it, anguish, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril of the sword, all of those pale in the light of Christ's love for his people. This is surely where our faith realizes itself. And I think with Ken, it was very easy to see his faith. He lived it on his sleeve. And I think many of us would agree with that. You mentioned in the eulogy all, all of the, the things he did. And I, I had the privilege about five years ago of celebrating Jerry Ann's um, funeral here at Spirit of Christ. And I'm going to tell, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to tell one story. Shortly after I came to Spirit of Christ, which is about seven years ago now, um, it was Holy Thursday. And a group of us went out to dinner after the Mass, the Holy Thursday Mass in the evening. Jerry Ann and Ken were there. So we're sitting together at the restaurant, and I found myself sitting next to Jerry Ann, who I didn't really know that well at the time, and Ken was on the other side of her. Well, we were ordering, and everybody's ordering drinks, and people are ordering, you know, Chardonnay and Cabernet and all this stuff, and Jerry Ann leaned over to me and she said, I don't want to drink wine. Are you drinking a beer? I want to drink a beer. <laughs> And I said, yes, I will order a beer with you. And Ken on the other side kind of rolled his eyes a little bit. You know? And I thought, you know, they know each other well. They know each other well. And I thought, I'm going to like this, these two. You know, I'm going to like this couple. And I came to like them very much. And I came to really appreciate Ken. You know, when Jerry Ann died, she was um, serving in a really important and very holy ministry here at Spirit of Christ. She, she was in charge of the homebound ministry. And there's really... There are many ministries in a church and ways in which people serve their fellow brothers and sisters. But one of, the, one of the best and one of the most profound is taking communion to people in their homes. And Jerry Ann coordinated that here at the parish for many years. And then when, when Jerry Ann passed away, I remember having a sort of a discussion about who's going to replace her in this very important ministry. Well, Ken came forward and said, I'll take her place. And I remember that and thinking, wow, you know, that's, that shows something about their bond with each other and their support of each other. And Ken continued to serve in that ministry for many years, including um, being here every Friday and reposing the Blessed Sacrament after adoration. Those are the small ways in which we really show our faith and show how our faith not only is something we express with our words, but we live with our actions, live in our lives. You know, as Paul says today, you know, the love of Christ is stronger than anything we can throw against it, anything that life can bring against it. That is the source of great hope for us. In death, Ken is now experiencing face to face the God who created him, the Jesus who loved him, who he loved, and that he expressed itself in all of his actions of charity and hope. We pray that for ourselves as well. And we pray, continue to pray for Ken, but we also pray more importantly today, in many ways, for ourselves. We pray for the gift of, of hope and love to, to continue to grow within us, to be very strong within us, and to show itself, and to show itself in how we live our lives. This is what Jesus calls us to. And this is what Jesus says, I come in my own mission, sent from the Father, to teach, to model, and to show to you, and to call you to live the same. Anyone who believes in me will have eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. The ultimate hope and our ultimate prayer for Ken today.
Please stand. God the Almighty Father raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people living and dead. For Ken, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Ken, that they may be consoled in their death and in, the, in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sin and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Ken, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and Jorge, as auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Ken, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now, let us pray in the words Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Deacon AJ and I will distribute communion on either side, Deacon AJ on this side, myself on this side. And if you are a Catholic and wish to receive communion, you can come forward. If you uh, are not Catholic and wish to receive a blessing, you can come forward with your hands folded on your chest.
Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother Ken, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ has prepared for us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that all of you are invited to lunch. And the two options, if you would like to go immediately to the cemetery to Mount Olivet and participate in the committal service there, we'll be leaving immediately after, month, after mass in an escorted procession. If you would not uh, prefer not to do that, you can go directly over to the Spirit Center. If you don't know what that is, you'll see people walking there. Just keep walking straight. But even if, please know that you're all included, whether, no matter how well you knew Ken or, or, or anything, we'd love to, to make that gift to all of you. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ken in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings that you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant 
and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now, let us take our brother to his place of rest.